Muy buenas noches. A very good evening to everyone here, heads of delegation of the international community. Here in this this time to seven, first uh, session of the UN General Assembly. Mr. President, on behalf of the President of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro Moros, allow me to congratulate you on your presidency of this 71st session. We wish to say that we are ready to contribute to the success of your presidency and thereby to strengthen the authority of the United Nations, which is the most democratic and representative of the United Nations. We are in the sacred house of the multilateral system, which is a banner for the fundamental principles in international relations between sovereign and equal states. The Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela claims the principles and purposes of the Charter of the United Nations, which call for respect for the right to self-determination of peoples, to sovereignty, independence, and the territorial integrity of states which are the underpinnings of the peaceful coexistence between nations within the framework of a pluripolar system. The presence of Venezuela in the Security Council as a non-permanent member since January 2015 has been geared towards reaffirming the validity of sovereignty, political independence, self-determination, and the peaceful settlement of disputes. A year ago, the heads of state and government adopted the 2030 uh, development agenda here in the General Assembly, and the purpose was ultimately to eradicate hunger and poverty while reminding everyone that it was people-based and that it was universal and transformative. However, allow me to draw your attention to the main obstacle facing the world in achieving these noble purposes. The capitalist model significantly hinders the right of development of peoples. It creates deep inequalities and threatens the very existence of the planet and the human species. The consumption generated by capitalism was able to melt over the past 50 years the ice caps and creating in the planet unsustainable climate conditions. In the words of Pope Francis in his encyclical, man's actions and his production and consumption models have made the planet a huge waste heap. It is a model that is based on and develops based on the expansion of violence in its various manifestations, both in terms of internal conflicts as well as broader wars. In 2015, the global military spending was $1.7 billion, and out of this amount, the United States alone was responsible for a third to finance its wars and imperial aggressions, a total of $600 billion. It is almost difficult to imagine this figure for some countries. The United States has almost 800 military bases around the world with a maintenance cost close to $100 billion a year. There's a reason why in 1968 Martin Luther King said the United States is the largest exporter of violence throughout the world. Mr. President, conflicts in five centuries show the intrinsic link between violence and the expansion of capitalism. In the 16th century, there was 1.6 million deaths caused by conflicts. In the 17th century, we saw an increase in that figure to 6.1 million people killed. In the 18th century, we saw an increase going up now to 7 million. And in the 19th century, we saw an increase to 19.4 million people killed. And in the 20th century, 109.7 million deaths caused because of deadly violence and conflicts. So this tragic history of deadly violence also went hand in hand with the expansion of uh, capitalism and its financial impact. Deadly violence in a matter of five centuries went from 0 0.32 to 4.35. So we are a much more violent planet. 
Contemporary wars have also seen changes in the way they are waged. We now see a predominance of internal conflicts, and furthermore, this is taking place mostly in poor countries. Just to give you a tragic example, the United Nations 2005 report introduced a dramatic piece of information pointing to the link between violence and capitalism. Out of three million people who were killed because of conflicts since 1990, two million of them were children. Mr. President, capitalism is a serious threat to the future of humankind. Terrorism, which is a terrible expression of deadly violence, is also reconfiguring itself and becoming more violent and expansive. It is attacking poor or devastated countries. It pursues geopolitical aims to bring down states, their institutions, and it allows for the illegitimate appropriation of the strategic resources of countries. Venezuela rejects terrorism in all its forms and condemns the double standard that we see the centers of hegemony seeking to bring about as they seek to create an artificial artificial subcategories of terrorism. It is good if it serves their interests and the interests of their in overthrowing governments that are not in line with their aims. And it is bad when there is a boomerang effect that makes victims of their own people. This is in part to the commercialization of war, trafficking in weapons. And we see that deadly violence has led to more deaths and has deepened inequalities. It is showing its greatest contradiction. Today we are now seeing enough wealth being produced for everyone on this planet. However, we also see this wealth in a few hands and we are seeing poverty concentrated mainly in the countries of the South and within the central countries. The gap between rich and poor was disproportionately increased. In the case of the United States, it is clear that this gulf since 1942 until 2010 has tripled in size. In 1978, just to give you an example, a worker of the working class earned $48,000 and an executive at the top of his game earned $393 thousand dollars annually. In 2010, that average worker earned 33000 and the senior executive more than $1.1 million per year. According to Oxfam, 1% of the planet's inhabitants own the wealth of the other 90%. But the most significant in this matter is that this is not uniform throughout the world. It is worse in developing countries and even worse in certain sub sectors where the distance in this gap between those who are wasting and squandering resources and those who are dying of hunger is pathetic. The concentration of capital became unproductive wealth and speculative wealth, which was pernicious in the way it fed certain economic sectors such as communication, energy, banking, financing, and so on and so forth. It is the way of gaining wealth without producing. It is a model that is based on violence and makes peace a far-flung dream for humankind. We only have to uh, look at con the, the, the most serious conflicts to see how this is affecting global peace and stability. The Palestinian question continues to be a pending cause for humankind everywhere. War crimes and massive violations of human rights of the pa Palestinian people show that this is a daily, this is daily fare for them. This shows how that there has been a 20, uh, an increase from 20% to 55% in poverty there, and it has worsened. There is no time to refer to the number and types of violations of human rights that are committed every hour against the Palestinian people. Venezuela backs the right to self-determination of Palestine through the existence of a free state that is sovereign and independent. independent. And it's for this reason that we believe that this organization, the United Nations, therefore must take a decision as soon as possible to ensure that Palestine is admitted as a full-fledged state here in the United Nations. We back the establishment of a Palestine state with safe borders and, and recognize, internationally recognized borders prior to 1967 with East Jerusalem as its capital. Our country is making a plea to Israel to put an end to the prolonged occupation of territory belonging to the Palestinian state. The Israeli occupation of its territories and its policies based on this are 
the main cause of the human rights violations of the Palestinian people and the international humanitarian law. Venezuela also calls for the definitive lifting of the illegal blockade of the Gaza Strip since 2007, which is a flagrant violation of the human rights of these people. Mr. President, there will be no peace in the Middle East unless Israel stops denying the human rights of the Palestinian people, including their right to self-determination. In the case of Iraq, this the, the, the case made for the second invasion in 2003 was based on a truth that not only was not proven, but later on was recognized by the main invaders as a lie. The military invasion was preceded by an effective propaganda campaign based on four main issues. None of them were true. These reasons never existed. What is normally ex recognized as uh, information became war propaganda. The major media houses motive carried out campaigns to justify the imperial aggression. In Libya in 2011, we also saw a military intervention by NATO. And this nation was plunged into violence and became a victim of terrorist groups and its human development index plunged. And we saw its cooperation mechanisms with uh, neighboring countries of Mother Africa disturbed. Libya has levels of production of oil close to 1,600,000 barrels per day. And by August, it was barely 260,000 barrels per day. Once again, the imperial obstinacy of the Western powers uh, forced, hampered the right to development of peoples, the right to peace, the right to have a homeland. The migratory flows of um, Libyan citizens seeking a better future beyond their borders has also impacted the levels of poverty in central countries. And we also saw knock-on effects in Afghanistan and Yemen. In the Syrian Arab Republic, we see a full-on battle against the terror, barbaric terrorism affecting that country, where the Syrian people are the main victims of the violence at the hands of the terrorist groups. Terrorism has caused one of the greatest humanitarian tragedies over the past few decades in Syria, which has led to millions of uh, displacement, displaced people and refugees who are fleeing the widespread violence to save their lives with regardless of the risks that they have to encounter. The dramatic images of women, men and children seeking to cross the Mediterranean reflect the seriousness of the armed conflict in that Arab country caused by the terrorist groups and a violent opposition. Overcoming the humanitarian tragedy of 3.5 million uh, Syrian citizens must come through the overthrow of terrorism and a peaceful solution and political solution to the armed conflict in this brother country. Venezuela also welcomes the return of diplomatic relations between the United Nations and our sister Republic of Cuba as the only way to overcome and to solve the differences between states. The people of Cuba have for decades resisted with dignity and heroism the scourges of the state terrorism that from the north sought to attack its development model, its political, social and cultural model. The Cuban people are still subject to the criminal, economic, commercial, and financial blockade. And Venezuela m calls on the United Nations to put an end to this blockade as well as to r provide reputation, reparations for this illegal and arrogant act. Mr. President, 16 years ago, President Hugo Chavez Frias, in this very forum during the Millennium Summit, said that the United Nations could not navigate with a map that was based on the reality of 1945, which was the product of the end of the Second World War. It is now necessary so as to successfully tackle the complex uh, challenges 
to peace, stability, and economic and social development of humanity, for that this organization be renewed and strengthened, which will require a reform of its main bodies. And this means that we must advocate for a comprehensive reform of the Security Council, and this must include developing countries from Africa, Latin America, Caribbean, and Asia, in addition to other important reforms within this organization. The uh, General Assembly is the democratic and universal body par excellence of the organization. Our country reaffirms its position in favor of strengthening the authority of this body in the various spheres that the Charter uh, has entrusted to it, peace and security, economic and social development, human rights, and international cooperation. Furthermore, the double standard perspective and the political use of human rights to justify the interventionism in our countries that serves imperial interests seriously undermines the institutional framework of this organization and it becomes a genuine challenge where it for this to protect human rights of peoples and not just individual rights of elite global bodies. We must ensure that the United Nations system takes actions for governance of the proper governance of peoples. We also see major challenges for the new Secretary General who will be elected soon, but also to ensure that free and sovereign countries bear the main responsibility of taking collective action in this noble um, endeavor. Venezuela is grateful to Secretary General Ban Ki-moon for his efforts in favor of peace, international peace and security. The United Nations, we must recognize it, has made huge contributions to humankind. Its intrinsic purposes of peace and security are based on a powerful multilateral system making up made up of international rule of law through the codification of relations we must pool our efforts to preserve it and move towards a better world mr president in margarita just a few days ago we held the 17th summit of non-aligned countries and we presided this important group of countries and we share with them the same concerns. We also obtained important outcomes and we continue to be committed to peace, development, solidarity and the welfare of our people within the framework of the Bandung principles which inspired our creation. Albert Einstein said in 1946, I am firmly convinced that most of the peoples of the world would prefer to live in peace and security. The desire for peace can only become a reality through the creation of a global government, and we are committed to this in the South, and we represent a third of the countries making up this organization. It bears noting that while in that meeting a U.S. aircraft violated Venezuelan airspace and that same day U.S. aviation attacked the National Syrian uh, Army causing the death of dozens of Syrians and left many more wounded. That same day India was the attack of a terrorist attack and the Palestinian people suffered violent attacks that caused the death of uh, Palestinian brothers. As you will see, the people of the South who have the most energy, mining, gas, and water resources are the main victims of violence and also of imperial aggression. Over a year ago, the President of the United States decreed an executive order that declared Venezuela was a threat to the national security of the United States and its foreign policy. It was rejected by most countries in the world. But furthermore, from the United States, we saw extremist violent groups being encouraged to cause death in Venezuela and to overthrow the constitutionally elected government of um, Nicolas Maduro through various economic forms of aggression, sophisticated um, media campaigns and a media campaign and financial boycott. We alerted the international community that Venezuela had been singled out as a target and 
that our territorial integrity was being attacked with a view to illegitimately taking ownership of our major strategic natural resources. Imperial history, which is laden with violence, was at risk of being repeated. The agenda of aggressions make up a, an unconventional war to criminalize and penalize our development model on, based on socialism. In the 21st century, and which is deeply inclusive, it seeks to distribute wealth for everyone and to bring about equality. Our continent has had very difficult relations with the United Nations because of its imperial domination and expansion. These dark pages of colonialism have been overcome by the decision of our people to be free and independent. However, new drums of aggression are now rumbling in the north, and we now see the threat of passing through this dark history once again. We denounced the parliamentary coup d'etat in Brazil, and we see the strings being pulled from Washington. We must remember that Venezuela was blamed for having one of the most just rates of distribution of wealth in Latin America, where we had an index of 0 0.38. In 2005, UNESCO declared our country free of illiteracy. And we now see UNESCO recognizing our 77% enrollment rate for children between 3 and 6 years old, 96% for children between 6 and 12, 76 to 12 to 18. And we see enrollment in universities of, of for over 2.6 million students. By 2012, FAO recognized Venezuela for its social policies to reduce hunger and poverty over half of our national territory. In 2015, the FAO once again recognized the government of uh, President Nicolas Maduro for the exceptional progress in reducing hunger and poverty. In our country, the free health care program covers over 75% of our people, and we will soon be reaching 100%, and we are also exporting this to Cuba. Our housing program has benefited over one 0.1 million families. We've seen a huge f emphasis on protecting our elderly and retired persons, and in 17 years we have seen over 3 million people benefit from this program. Mr. President, we are a hope for the vast majority of persons who are victims of a ruthless model of human dimensions. In Venezuela, we seek peace, genuine peace for people, and to come up with a new economic, culture, and communication model that serves peace, development, and equality. We support the effort of the BRICS countries to make up a pluripolar and multicentric world, which strikes a balance with nature. We also will always wage a battle against the capitalist system, which reproduces violence and unhappiness. Like our liberator Simon Bolivar said, we say that the, the most perfect system of government is that which produces the most happiness possible, the most social security possible, and the most political stability possible. Let us give the world the most happiness, the most security, and the most stability pos possible. We must now achieve social justice. We must change the system and be genuine militants for peace. Thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the political vice president and minister for foreign affairs of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela for her statement just made and I request protocol to escort Her Excellency